FIG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Georgia Byrne and Father Rob Gallia, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Gospels and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Gospels, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influencers, Father Rob Gallia Homilies. And for the first time in a long time, we're all in the same room at the same time. How exciting it is to have everyone here today. Hello. Hi, everyone. This is awesome. So we really, in the end of season four, um, the three of us got to be together for the first time, like ever, and we really loved it. And so when we were planning for season five, we thought, let's do this more often. So um, a little bit of a bonus episode today. Um the bonus part is that we're all together. We're still going to go yes. through the gospel. We're still going to... Bonus gonna... for us too. That's right. <laughs> um, still going to go through the gospel. We're still going to do all of our little um, segments. Um, but we've got a very exciting topic, which we'll get into a little later on. Yes. And we're doing that topic because people have requested it. Someone, actually, I didn't mention it in a podcast once. And then people are saying, yes, you have to do that topic. Yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, a bit of a disclaimer, this, this topic's not directly related to, t- to today's gospel, but we do think you're going to enjoy it nonetheless. And I yes. think it's going to be very, a very cool thing to talk about. And go, Beautiful. and go for a run, go for a walk, because there's a lot of theology right here. <laughs> <laughs> Just, so m- m- prepare your minds. We want to teach you. We, we don't want to compromise. There's so much that God wants to teach us um, and wants us to go. Pope John Paul II used to talk a lot about understanding the heart of God. He says we need understanding and we need faith. We need two things. And so this is, again, um, we, we need the faith we have, but also an understanding of, of our faith. Yeah, but before we do that, how are you, Georgia? Good. I was just saying um, I love autumn. It's one of my – I love all the seasons for a different reason, but uh, summer has been – it gets a bit hot. So I've been really looking forward to – obviously in Australia it's autumn now. Yep, the autumn so. leaves. You were, Georgia was just singing us a really nice <laughs> song before we hit record. Um, so that's right. This is our first episode of autumn. And yeah, as we said, it's great to be all together in the same room. So yeah. we might get into the gospel. Georgia's going to read yeah. it for us. Um, so we're preparing for the fourth Sunday of Lent. And so this week's gospel is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Beautiful. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might, have, might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come into the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. There's a lot there, eh? There's a lot there. Heaps there, but straight away, what jump, when, whenever you think of Christianity, you've always, you see the bookmarks, you see all the, mm-hmm. is it the car stickers that just say John 316? Yeah. And so when I was, um, I think it's, like, it's a Keith Urban song, it's called ah. John 316. Like, oh, um, wow. I don't know, I just feel like it's like one of the, the poster verses of Christianity. Yes, mm. and it's one of the most popular verses. And it's, a, it's a, the heart, the heart of our theology as mm. well, of understanding who God is. I think one of the biggest problems with Christianity and even within the church itself is that we don't understand John 3.16. Mm. We don't understand who God is. And it's significant because Jesus, even in the, in the gospel uh, here, is trying to show us, trying to show us, John, how, um, who God is, that God is not a God of condemnation, that God is not a God who is angry at us. But anyway, we'll go so much deep into there. It's not, not only 316, but this is right in the bang in the middle. Yeah, that's of, all that jumped out at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So, um, but maybe a bit of context of where this gospel kind of happens uh, and, and what's happening in this gospel. So we do know that it's a dialogue between Jesus and a, a Pharisee that was pretty high up, a Pharisee called Nicodemus. Mm. Um, and it contains a lot of symbolic language. And so what we know about Nicodemus is that he struggled to understand what Jesus taught, mm. you know, um, because Jesus speaks um, in spiritual, um, in terms of spiritual supernatural things, whereas mm. Nicodemus thought more on like an earthly level. Um, and so Jesus in, in this passage, this conversation is trying to lead Nicodemus into a bit of a deeper understanding. Um, you, were, you were saying before, even as we're preparing that, I, I must admit, um, I, I don't, I haven't yet. And I, I want to, I haven't, well, that's another subject for another time, but Cue I haven't watched The, the Chosen. Cue all the comments. Oh my God. <laughs> I haven't watched The Chosen. But, but tell me, you were talking about the scene that stood out for yeah, you with so, Nicodemus. Um, the Chosen, it's a... Oh like a Netflixy series type thing of the gospels. And it, I found that it really brought the gospels to life for me. And I, I just saw the characters, you kind of get to know the characters as people, like rather than just kind of on paper. Mm. Um, and I, I really, one of my favorite scenes in, in that season is this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. And you can really see Nicodemus's heart starting to change. And it's kind of like he wanted to follow Jesus, but he, he was still torn by his old ways of, I guess, being mm. a Pharisee. So, yeah, I really, I can still picture it in my head today. Like I really. So it went from like his scene. his head to all of a sudden to his heart, and he didn't know how to deal with it, yeah. and and the consequence mm. of the, letting the light in, thinking that he'd have to change too much, yeah, too quick. And yeah. again, this is very significant as well to w- to the words that are happening there. So that's very profoundly theological as well, even in the interpretation of the of the um, the character. And it's always challenging, I think, for some like I think for someone that tries to think of things and work things out in their head. And when you try and get it to their heart, it can be a bit confronting. So I can imagine that it would have been. Yeah. So Mm. he's talking to Nicodemus there who understood Mm. the Jewish law. He understood um, sort of the second Kings where this is being taken from and numbers 21. Mm. So uh, there's something happening. He's document, he's putting an analogy. He's comparing himself. Jesus Mm. is comparing himself to something that happened in the old Testament. Yeah. So Mm. in, in the old Testament, um, what happened was that the law in the book of Numbers, I guess, Numbers 21, where Father was just talking about, mm. um, the Lord afflicted the Israelites with fiery serpents as kind of like a punishment for their rebellious complaining. Mm. And so the Israelites would always speak out to Moses and ask him to intercede for them. Mm. And so what God did was God instructed Moses to make a bronze serpent and affix it to a pole. And so when the Israelites gazed at that the symbolic portrayal of the effects of their sin, that being the serpent, um, they were granted healing and life. And so Mm -hmm. this is kind of like connects us to the cross because with the crucifixion, we know that's the ultimate effect of human sin. But when we today gaze on that with faith, Mm. that's where we're changed and given eternal life. So this is why Jesus is talking about the serpent Mm. in this gospel. He's making that connection between what happened in the Old Testament and, and what's happening now in the New Testament. Yes, and so he's also referring to himself as well in, in this, that Jesus is the serpent that is being raised up. Yeah. But uh, for, for the Jew, like Nicodemus being a Pharisee, he would have had an issue with this imagery mm-hmm. because he would have, a lot of the Jewish leaders would have questioned why would even Moses have to built an idol and that was mm-hmm. to be looked upon when the mm-hmm. idol themselves cannot heal, cannot touch. It's full in the Old Testament. Some mm-hmm. of the people saying, of the Jews saying, do not build idols for you. Moses himself said, do not build idols for you. Yes. And yet he comes to this place where he's comparing himself to an idol. So it's, <laughs> Nicodemus yeah. is saying, wait, wait, hold on, Jesus. What's there's there's on? something. Yeah. <laughs> but what he's doing is comparing himself. He's, he uses the word, um, mm-hmm. the, the, the word in Greek, actually, it's hoopsun, which means to be raised up. Now, mm. that word is only used for two references in the New Testament. The first one is to be lifted up when Jesus is lifted up on the cross in the Philippians. Okay, he starts, it says that he was raised up on the cross. And also, it's also the second time it is mentioned, actually the first time it's mentioned, but the second context it's mentioned is when Jesus was lifted up, hoopsun, on the cloud during the ascension. He was taken up into his glory. Mm-hmm. So that same lifting up, that raising of the serpent Mm -hmm. was how Jesus was going to be raised up. Both necessary. The two raising up, which which are so important. The first time is Jesus raised up on the cross, the death to self, the death 
and all of a sudden, uh, once because he because he goes through that, then he he's raised up to to the glory of God. Now you have a saying, Georgia, as well that you often say, you cannot have something without something oh, else. I always say, well, you can't have the resurrection without the cross. You can't have the cross without the resurrection. Like it's you have to have both for our faith. Yeah. And I can't pretend that's my quote. It's Father Vic Farija. Shout out because he often listens. So, <laughs> Hello, can't. hello. No, yeah. I always don't remember whenever I hear that, I think, because oh, <laughs> yeah. you, you say it all the time. But it's so true, isn't it? Like It, it really is. So yeah. you, you both are necessary. The cross, you can't have, you can't refuse. That's what it is. Right. You cannot mm. refuse the cross. Yes. Uh, because if you refuse the cross, you're refusing the glory. They're hand yeah. in hand. Okay? Yes. So this is what Jesus is saying here. He's just saying, hey, Nicodemus, you're going to have to embrace the cross if you're going to have to, if you're going to embrace the glory of God. Yeah. Mm. Next verse. Next verse. So I think we're kind of getting into John 3, 16. Yeah. So for God so loved the world, he gave us his only son. Finish it off for me. That whosoever should believe in him shall not die, but shall have eternal, eternal life. life. Fantastic. I'm thinking there's a new song out. It's called... God so loved us by a band called We the Kingdom that's playing loud in my car lately. So okay, go sing it check for us. Sing out. it for us. Yeah. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Oh, that's good. I don't sing on a Wednesday. Oh, my but, goodness. Um, that's anyway, so good. it's a great song. You, you Please go and singer. check that out. Oh, yeah. Really? You <laughs> should do it for a job. <laughs> <laughs> but a really huge point that we can take out, yeah. out of that verse is that salvation, salvation. is a gift. Yes. It is a gift and it's yep. it's God's initiative yep. as yes. well. God reaches out to us and, mm -hmm. and we need to respond. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think it's so important for us to understand two things. I, it, it was so prevalent, this theology that God was angry I don't know even if, if you've ever heard this, especially in Protestantism, and it infiltrated, the, this heresy also infiltrated Catholicism, mm -hmm. that it was like that God was, the story of salvation, they would say, is that God is so angry, so angry at the world, and this is the Old Testament view that God mm -hmm. would send punishment, mm -hmm. but to pacify that, that anger, Jesus, sort of like lightning, sends down his only son, just say, it's like, hold, I'm holding back, I'll send my son, but instead of instead of killing you, I'm going to kill my son. Mm. Mm. That's wrong theology. That's wrong theology because this is what it says that mm. salvation is God's initiative. Mm -hmm. He loves us. It's not. He doesn't have an anger that needs to be pacified. It's not a whitewashed field, a muddy field, all of a sudden covered in the in the love of Christ. No, God mm. so loved us, so loved us in our mess. That he wants God to bring us. He sends his son to bring us up to him. It, salvation is God's initiative. Mm. And we need to understand that. We need to understand that God is chasing after us. He's running after us. Mm -hmm. He's desperate. Uh, uh, do you want to go to heaven? Yeah, definitely. And mm. I think that's the thing. Like God loves us in our mess. And we're saying that before. Like everyone thinks, oh, you have to be some people think you have to be perfect for God to love you, but actually he loves us where we're at. That's an incredible mystery to me, you know. Yes. He still loves you even if you're, you know, not in a great place. Like he, he, But he wants you to have salvation. He wants us to go to heaven. Yes. So it's, But it's a, a gentle way. Like his salvation is a gift because it's, it's gentle. It's not um, conditional, I guess. Well, Yeah, it's know. unconditional. Yeah, yeah like unconditional right. love. But we still have to live the right way. But yeah. I've always loved the quote. I can't remember who said it. Um, yeah. Probably I heard it in a talk. But God loves us so much, but he loves us too much to leave us that way. Yes. He Love loves that. us, yeah. yeah he loves us the... just as we are, but he loves us too much to leave us as we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and God wants you to get to heaven more than you could ever want to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's great you want to go to heaven, mm -hmm. but God wants it more because God loves you. God's jealous for you. God yes. wants, he not only loves you, but he likes you. Yeah. He, he yeah. wants to spend eternity <laughs> with you. You know, you're good company. Not to everyone, but to Jesus, you're yeah. good company. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, another thing to pull out of this this verse as well, uh, like who is who is this gift for? You know, everyone, <laughs> everyone. It says God so loved the world. Like it didn't say specifically God loved the mm. Israelites, mm. even though they were the chosen people. But God loved, or, or God only loved mm. 
Good people, you know. Good people. Mm. People with blonde hair and blue eyes. Like, I don't know, just God loves loved the world. Everyone. So this gift yes. is for everyone, as you said, Georgia. Mm. And even if you were the only, St. Augustine says this, that even if you were the only person that ever existed, mm. Jesus would still have come down to die for you. Wow. And mm. even if you're not Catholic, even if you're not a Jew, even if you are not Christian, even if you chose to reject Jesus, Jesus still would have come into this world mm. for you because you matter. Your salvation matters because God loves you. And this is for us to understand that, that Jesus did say so clearly that God so loved the world, mm. loved the world. And he is reiterating what he said in Genesis. Mm. He looked at the world after the seven days of creation and he saw that it was good. He saw that it was good. All, all of it in its mess. Mm. The world is intrinsically good. You are intrinsically good. And you might not feel good. You not, might not feel strong. You might not feel lovable. But I just say this to you. Get over yourself and let God love you. Mm. Let him love you because he sent his only son for you. And even if you're thinking, and it's certainly not me, well, I'll tell you, it most definitely is you. God loves you and wants you for himself. You're good company. And I hope as well that I make it to heaven and I get to spend time in your company too. Mm. And I think that can really extend to how we treat people because people can, you know, we can frustrate ourselves. We can, people can frustrate us or like, you know, anyone. It could be, you know, the person that's driving badly or the, you know, whatever, any situation, someone at the restaurant that takes too long to bring your food, doesn't matter. And I always have to stop myself and go, but Jesus loves that person, you know, yeah. and yeah. that's hard, but to hard. really stop and go, but when God looks so at that, that person, <laughs> oh, I hope so. But I think, you know, like, it's really stop and go, but God loves that person. I've got to love that person how God does. That's it. That's our challenge. Yeah. Because that's what will help people get to know Jesus more, you know. Anyway, yeah. it's just a bit of a side topic, but, but that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> exactly. A whole other podcast, but something cool to, cool to mention. And I think as well, um, we're talking about this salvation as a gift and it's, it's our response. And so mm. it's important to understand that our decision to believe. Yes in Jesus or not to believe in Jesus that's yeah. direct, directly linked with what's going to happen to us yeah. when we die you know it's either going to be eternal life or it's going to be yeah condemnation yeah do we want to go towards the light or the dark exactly yeah and oh, it's you know and sometimes it is it's hard to like when we feel down or we have darkness in our lives it's easier to sit there than kind of trying to move towards the light you know but that's what Jesus invites us to do Exactly, and there's, I, um, we we're saying that there is comfort in darkness, isn't there? Yes, because mm. the, uh, the darkness, is, if, especially if you don't have light in your heart, mm. the, the dark place is a, a place that's, that's safe, that's mm. good, just leave me here in my darkness, even myself. And I say this, and I, I, I'm resistant to talk about this, but like I, even in moments where if you're suffering from mental illness, sometimes you just want, to stay there in the darkness. Every part of you is desperate to get out of the darkness, mm. but there's a strange part of you that just wants to be left alone in the darkness. Mm. And that's we know, we know that that's not where we're going to find joy and peace and happiness. Mm. But God, God wants to reach out to us. And, and very often, people who are in darkness, in sin, don't want the light to reach out to them because they don't understand who God is. Mm. They think God is there to condemn them. They think God is there to, 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 to put them down or to destroy a, a, a part of them. And because if you let light in, the consequence of letting light in mm. is that you can see yourself. Yes. Mm. And many people don't want to see. They don't want to see themselves mm. because they're, they're, they're scared of what they might see, what they might experience. I came across a really uh, yeah. interesting quote from St. Augustine that speaks to that. It says this, it says, people love the truth for the light it sheds, but hate it when it shows them up as being wrong. Mm. Mm. That's right. It's like, you know, having a, a, a rock. I have a, a rock out there and I put it there. So I put a fire pit on top of it. Mm. And I'm, I'm, when I mow the lawn, I have to remove this, this um, piece of rock. Mm. And I'm always scared. <laughs> Why? Why do you think? You don't want to What's see underneath it? Yeah. Spiders. <laughs> Spiders. Ants. 
in Australia, yeah, it's bugs, cockroaches, whatever. Cockroaches. <laughs> Kangaroos, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I saw another one this morning. <laughs> but, anyway, but what happens is I lift it up and there are these bugs, mm. but I, I just throw off the rock and, and I mow the lawn. But by the time, like 30, 40, 50 seconds later, by the time I get there, the bugs are gone. They've gone into the mm. grass. They've gone into, they've, they've spread out. So this is the, the nature of light. Light gets rid of the bugs in our life. It gets rid of, of, of the, the pests in our life. It gets rid of the things in our life that fester, that, that destroy, and, and that take away what we're called to be. And so if you want sin to be destroyed, the best way is to let the light into that place of darkness. Exactly. And people don't want because people like the bugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not me, mate. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> That's, I think we've covered most of the gospel, guys. So we'll go into the next section. What's the next section, Father Rob? So this is um, <laughs> our dad joke section. All right. Make us laugh. <laughs> okay, so... I have a dad joke, um, which was submitted to us by one of our listeners. So again, if you have a dad joke, please, please submit those. Um, and they are getting better since we've uh, been asking people to submit them because, um, yeah, the ones I have had before were terrible. Okay, so why did Adele... I'm going to ask Georgia this. You do, did you see the answer? No. <laughs> why did Adele cross the road? I don't know. Why? To say hello from the other side. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? That's actually yeah, really you, good. Yeah, you should sing that. Sing that. Yeah, oh, I was just singing no. it. Yeah. I had to sing that. Go, 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 go. Hello go. from the other side. That's all yes. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Some next. people are not. No. You are next to sing Hey, no. I know another one. It's like Adele rolling in the deep. You know the Adele rolling in the deep yeah. one yeah, yeah, the computer? That. I can't an, remember an, it. Next, next episode. Uh, another dad joke, you mean. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the something about Adele. Yeah. The Adele computer. D-E-L-L. Yeah, yes. roll, it's rolling in the deep. You can find that for next I'll find okay. episode. Okay. Well, you've given half of it away. So. <laughs> sorry, too late. Oh, Send in your dad jokes, other ones. Yeah. Okay, Please so do. we're going to Saint Me. Saint Me a picture. Okay, who's the saint of this week? Apparently, he's a vegan, and Father Rob's going to tell us <laughs> well, about this. Well, I think this. he's a vegan. Historians okay. think he's a vegan. Yeah. <laughs> um, saint John the Baptist, what can you tell us? Well... I would say that why is he a vegan? I don't know. You but the you scripture, said he could be, well, yeah. Why I think, is he? No. Well, um, my, this is many historians would say this. He, he's, it says he ate locusts and honey. So if you eat locusts, technically, you're not a vegan. Oh, so no. he's not really a vegan. No, but the thing is, the the word for locust is the same word as carob. It's mm. the carob tree. So yeah. many people think it wasn't actually locusts that he ate, but it was carob, the carob tree. You know, so the carob plant. He, he ate locusts and honey. Um, so that would make him a vegan. Can you... Uh, is honey vegan? I don't, I don't yeah, know. I think so, because it doesn't come out yeah. of an animal. Anyway, okay. We're not uh, endorsing or not endorsing no, veganism not here. <laughs> just, it's just interesting. <laughs> just thought it was interesting. Okay. He Tell was a prophet in Christianity and Islam. Still so. is, yes. Amazing. So many people. And Mary, you know, actually, yeah. I've been to a house of a Muslim friend of mine and they had a picture of Mary yeah. and I'm thinking, whoa. Really? Yeah, that was because I studied with a girl who followed Islam and there is a lot of similarities. Like when I was studying at ACU, the Australian Catholic um, University, we had to do a Venn diagram of the similarities and differences. And there is a lot of similarities, obviously a lot of differences, but yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's not about St. John the Baptist. <laughs> what else? Good to know, though. Why so does Father Rob like him something about Malta? Well, he has, he's a patron of the Knights of Malta. And in fact, they're the St. John Hospital he is. So any St. John ambulance you've ever seen, which has the Maltese cross on it, the eight-pointed point, eight oh. cross, that is St. John the Hospital he is. Yeah, so that's the Knights of Malta's patron saint. He was around the time, um, he was alive around the time that Jesus was alive. So we know that his birth was announced by the angel Gabriel to his father, Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth and this was kind of a strange thing because Elizabeth and Zechariah were both of old age and we know that Mary went to go and visit Elizabeth when she was pregnant with Jesus and um, John the Baptist left in her womb we know that as well mm -hmm. um, he was a baptizer he was a baptizer so John mm -hmm. the Baptist went to live in the desert um, when when he grew up and he warned people that the Messiah was coming so crowds kept coming to John the Baptist mm. to be baptized as a sign of their repentance. Yes. And, and so um, this guy, like many, many prophets would baptize at the time, but 
not many were like prophets and a baptizer. Mm -hmm. So like he was famous. He, he's the prophet guy. Which prophet are you talking about? The one who baptizes. Ah, okay, John. Yeah, Yahya, his name was. Mm -hmm. That's uh, in, in Hebrew. Um, so uh, Yahya the baptizer. I'm just showing off my Hebrew skills. Wow, yeah, that's you're, cool. You always come out with the words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess, how did he die? So John the Baptist was eventually imprisoned mm. for criticizing Herod for marrying a woman named Herodias. And Herodias hated him for speaking truth. And so um, Herodias's daughter was dancing for Herod. Mm -hmm. And Herod said to um, Herodias's daughter, it's so confusing with the two names, said, mm. you can have whatever you like. And so Herodias asked her daughter, to say to Herod, can I have John the Baptist's head? And so we know that John the Baptist was beheaded. And put on um, a plate. Yeah. Yikes. Mm. Just a few. Um, on the, We have an Instagram, not Instagram, a Facebook community page of where we have the studio here. And the, yesterday there was on Instagram that they found the head of a cow in the playground. <laughs> what? Imagine you're playing, your kids are playing. Oh, and then no. they put it. That's it was horrible. like literally the head of, anyway. Just reminded me, not that <laughs> I don't know why it reminded yeah. me of that. But just Where was it? Where was the cow? Just in the playground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just anyway, uh, just imagine <laughs> John the Baptist's head being presented to you like oh a person's gosh. head. No, it's devastating. A cow's head is devastating, let alone just John the Baptist. Just any head, just a head yeah, yeah. without yeah. a okay. body. Is That's right. Moving on, wrong. maybe I shouldn't have mentioned Let's that. Let's talk about the topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's our topic? Oh. Oh, our topic is... Go, Alyssa. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why did Jesus need to be baptized? Mm. So earlier this year, we celebrated the feast of the baptism of the Lord and Father Ob said, let's do a, a, podca um, a podcast about why did Jesus need to be baptized? So I yeah. think when we look at some context of this question, mm. um, I said before, in terms of John the Baptist, when people heard the Messiah was coming, they flocked to the desert to be baptized mm. by, by John as a sign of repentance because John's message was pretty simple. It was repent and prepare the way of the Lord. So people publicly came to John the Baptist. They um, said they were sinners and then they were, uh, they were baptized. So but we use those words in, in Ash Wednesday. You see? So that's right. Um, repent of your sins and believe in the good news. Mm -hmm. So we mm. quote John the Baptist in the Ash Wednesday, but not in baptism. Hmm? Interesting mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, but then when we look at Jesus, you know, we know Jesus was perfect. He didn't, he didn't have sins to repent of. But he still came to see John the Baptist. You know, he, Jesus was God. Mm. He was perfect. Um, and even John knew this, you know. Mm. Oh, well, he didn't quite know that Jesus was the Messiah, but he knew he was a really holy person. Mm. And we see in the Gospel of Matthew, he says, I need to, John says this to Jesus, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me. So why did Jesus need to be baptized if he didn't have any yeah. sin? Well, mm. I think w we need to get a bit theological here because I, in, in order to understand, first of all, the importance of baptism okay water baptism so many times people are baptized to get into a catholic school they're baptized because their parents have always done it but it jesus here is showing us what great lengths he's going through great lengths to show us the power of water baptism okay so this is taken mostly from matthew 3 okay so matthew 3 talks about this and so they have this confrontation they have this uh, sort of conversation him and john the baptist john the baptist is saying hey i've been seeing you around like i know you're a holy man he didn't know he was the messiah like you said and we know that because he said after the holy spirit came down upon him then he recognized that he was the messiah so at this point he might have had an inclination but he didn't know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he's saying hey you baptize me not i baptize you but jesus says something that is that changes everything that he explains through his words why he is um, baptized, why he is to be baptized. He says this, for it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Now, I bet you, none of you understand what that means. Like it's, that's a lot of, like it's uh, almost archaic, you know, mm. but the minute to, um, John the Baptist heard this, he said, okay, 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 I'll baptize you, I'll baptize you. Mm. Well, let's talk a little bit about what these words actually, actually mean. Anyone want to guess? Anyone want to say? Anyone wants to intervene? Nothing. No. Um, oh. You said it's fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So who is us? Who is Humanity. us? It means everyone <laughs> all of us. needs to be baptized to fulfill yes. what's right. Yeah. So what he's us saying is all of us, humanity. Yeah. Yes. So first of all, I think it'd be, let's take just a miniature step back. Mm -hmm. That we're, then we're, we're talking about two baptisms here. John the Baptist gave a baptism of repentance. Mm -hmm. Okay. That he was telling people to repent from their sins and to believe in the good news. Now, 
that is different to the baptism of Jesus. Jesus' baptism, actual baptism, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, but not he was not baptized with the baptism of John the Baptist. It wasn't a baptism of repentance. It was a baptism of water, which is different. Let me try and explain. So what he's saying here is that, uh, because it, it's not a, of repentance because Jesus didn't have any sin to repent of. Mm. He was mm. sinless, okay? So <laughs> there was no, no repentance necessary. But he says this. He says, um, for it is fitting for us, as you said, to fulfill all righteousness. So he's saying not for, for, uh, fitting for me, but for us. He's identifying with all who would follow him through the waters of baptism. So he's talking about you. He's talking about me. Whether you've been baptized or not, whether you uh, were baptized as a child or an adult, he was talking about you. That it is necessary, if you want to righteousness of Christ, if you want the love of Christ, if you want to, to receive the, the, the love that God showers on us in 3.16, John 3.16, then you have to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he sees that and he does that. And I will explain a little bit. But he also commands in, in Acts, he tells his apostles, go and baptize your people in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, water baptism. Mm -hmm. Shall I keep going? Yeah, yeah. keep going. Okay. Good. So first he says that um, it is necessary for us. Second, it is in order to fulfill all righteousness. So you are baptized in, in to be made righteous in Christ. It is a way to complete our righteousness. Now, identification with Jesus. Now, what, what happens is that w through baptism, we're identifying with his death, immersion, his burial, uh, underwater, and resurrection. We, we, we die in the watery grave and are buried with him, and then we arise with him to the newness of life. I don't know if you've ever seen the, how the people used to baptize in the, as early Christians. Anyone want to explain? how that used to happen with three steps. I know that the men and women were separate and yes. three steps down and three steps up. Do you want to continue? <laughs> <laughs> so what it was, was a, a basically a, a hole where there was water. So this is how it was baptized. Now we water, we sprinkle water over people, but mm -hmm. baptism never was a sprinkling of water. It was always an immersion because it's, to, it, we are immersed like Christ was immersed. Yeah. It's still a valid baptism, but it's, that's not how it was symbolically. So it was basically men and women were separate because what happened was you'd go with your clothes and then you'd stand at the the first three steps which was facing which was facing the um the temple and so you're there you take your first three steps you you go down those three steps and then you're immersed in the water and then you get up again and you go up those three steps but you take off your clothes you're naked you go under the water and then you take three steps up and you're given a white garment, okay? And this white garment was, um, was the symbolism of the new resurrection with Christ, the Holy Spirit. Mm. But then it required something else. The Holy Spirit would come and require us, what, so people could be baptized and that's it? Fine, I'm baptized. Well, oh, we'd have to change. We'd have to re repent, start again and change you know, we were different after this baptism. That's yeah, what, definitely. You um, know, we can enter into heaven. So it requires commitment, you know, a commitment to, to live as Christ lives. So yeah. just because you are baptized doesn't mean, okay, you can do what you want. Mm -hmm. To be baptized, you have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. You have to mm -hmm. let the Holy Spirit work in your life. You have to let God make a difference in your own life. So why was Jesus baptized, basically? He's just showing us, hey, that if you want to live in my life, death and resurrection, you have to do what I do. Come, I'll walk with you through the baptism waters. Come with me. Come and lay down your life. Get rid of your old clothes. Immerse yourself in my life and my death and my burial. And then rise with me in, through the resurrection. And then the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, and says, hey, okay, now it's not... It's not you who's going to give you the strength. It's the Holy Spirit. So our life needs to be a life as Jesus' life was. You know, Jesus didn't raise Jesus from the dead. The mm, Father the raised Father. Jesus from the dead through the power of yeah. the Holy Spirit. Of yep. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so he could rise, raise him up again. And so we are to live in that same resurrection power as mm. well. It's necessary for our salvation, you know, 
Yeah, definitely. And I, we would um, we talk about you know what why a baby's baptized straight away. We talk because it is necessary for salvation. But like you said, Father Rob, it does require a commitment. And so we know in our faith that mm. you know the parents and godparents make that commitment. Um, on behalf of the the baby, but then eventually we have to make that decision yes. ourselves. So, uh, uh, as you, as a parent or whoever, as who parents of of children who have, they have the authority over the body, mind, and soul. So they have the the authority to feed the child, not to feed the mm. child. They have the authority to educate the child, not to educate the child. Mm. And so they have also the authority to baptize the child or not baptize the child immerse them in christ to lead them but just because they're baptized then the people say this is which i find a bit ridiculous is saying i won't baptize my child and i'll let them choose when they grow up yeah just because you baptize a child first of all doesn't mean that they are living that baptism because mm. it requires you to live but would you say that about food ah uh, I, I won't feed my children and when they're 18 they can decide whether they want to eat or not mm. which is ridiculous you baptize if that's what you're convinced that is the road to salvation. And then it doesn't mean that they're going to live in that commitment. You have to train them and teach them to live out that commitment of, of knowing, loving and serving Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the sacraments help with that later, you know, communion, confirmation and, you know, the, get, get the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you are, it's like not another baptism, but you're, you know, it's a, you're thinking about commitment again, you know, so yeah. Exactly. Heaps. Heaps, heaps over there. So why was Jesus baptized? He was baptized to, for because it was fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness, that mm -hmm. we can receive all righteousness through baptism, that we follow him into his baptism. Okay. Yeah, and I would just say just something to take from this podcast as well, as well is that the baptism of Jesus was a different baptism to the one that, that John was doing. I yes. think that's really important. It's a, it's a completely different thing. Yes, mm -hmm. one was of repentance and the other one was a baptism of fire. The baptism of water. Hmm. Nice. Okay. So wow, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. It's been a great... I've enjoyed spending this time with you guys. Yeah, it's been great. It's we should good do to, this more. Yes, we yeah. should. <laughs> for those of you watching on the video, you're going to see me running around a lot because the cameras have been just playing up. <laughs> yeah. for, for some reason, they're usually good. And now all of a sudden, one, both cameras are falling to pieces. <laughs> the cameras are like, there's too many people in the room. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we um, focus on? <laughs> exactly. But we have so much more in store for you for the rest of this season. Thanks to everyone who entered our Saint Mia picture giveaway. We have more giveaways coming up so make sure you're plugged in to all of our social media channels and so georgia where can they find us instagram at Ca um, catholic influences underscore mm -hmm. uh and make sure you jump on instagram share it with your friends you know send in prayer requests send in you know um dad jokes things like that and also FRG YouTube and, um, yeah, you keep going. <laughs> yeah, Facebook, Sports Facebook. Slash Catholic Influencers. We're on Twitter. Yes. Cath Influencers. You can go to our podcast website, frgministry.com forward slash podcast. Also, another couple of things is we have the retreat, um, a Holy Week retreat. Please register. We've had over a thousand people register within the first 48 hours. I don't know where we're at right now. But we're limiting it very soon. I'm hoping even by the time you get to listen to this um, that it wouldn't be closed. But register. It's a free retreat. Courses.frgministry.com forward slash register. This is a whole week of uh, Stations of the Cross, reflections, webinars. Um, we're going to have a really great opportunity to know and love God. Also, um, if you are blessed by this ministry, please consider supporting this ministry. This podcast is supported entirely by you, our donors and our ministry partners. So go to frgministry.com forward slash donate. I think you've covered everything. Um, yeah, so join us for our Holy Week retreat. Follow us on social media. Mm -hmm. Share it with your friends. And we can't wait to be back to our normal setup. It'll be Father Rob and myself next week. Thank you. God bless you. And thank you, Georgia and Alyssa, for your um, input. And let's bless the Lord at all times. Thanks, Amen. Father Rob. Amen.